it's gonna be a big day i gotta cut out some tyvek i'm gonna install some windows i just put this window in here got my handy dandy new level garth i do own levels look two one's even digital <laughs> anyways that one actually fit in perfect it no problems there i'm going to finish screwing that in then i'm going to cut the window up top and uh put the next one in and then over here i'm going to put the next one in and then i'm going to tie back again i'm going to put the next one in and it keeps going and there we go so what i'm going to do i'm going to show you my window stash right now so i have bought all of my windows in advance and we are going to uh I needed to know exactly what they were before I had any uh, building done. So in the backyard here, we have got just about everything I needed to do. Backyard's a bit of a mess, it's just always going. But there's my windows. Here they are. Every single one of them was used. I got for like a hundred bucks. They're all vinyl, double paned. I'm working on that one there on the right right now and I'm gonna install a whole bunch of those today in this episode I'll be installing all of my windows doing some interior work and the beginnings of my metal roof it's really coming along hopefully you can learn some tricks and see how the standing seam metal roof works I was installing all the windows I really wanted to make sure that the Tyvek wrapped around the inside of the window to keep everything waterproof and that the blue skin was down to the base of the window seal and wrapped around the edges and even went up the side of the window about six or eight inches. And one more window up top, and this is complete. I'm gonna run out of uh, blue skin for the tops of these windows, so I'm gonna need to get some more of that. 
and I don't want to waste that otherwise I can't use it on the bottom of the window sills and can't put a window in so I'll keep on going and uh, up there in that top left with that last window I got a window I gotta put in for this triangle window on the side then maybe we'll go have some lunch who knows All right, seriously, what are you doing? I'm just tidying up. Maybe this is like ridiculous. Help you a little bit. Cop some wood, cut some pe two by fours. Come on. Um, is this treated wood or not treated wood? Uh, no, it's not treated wood. So I can just... use the sawdust and blueberries? Uh, yes. Oh, sure, here, let me come in. Oh, today, what we're going to do is. Hey, what are we doing? Measuring stuff. Yeah, we want to measure a few things. I want to make sure that these windows are exactly where they're supposed to be. And uh, the wall's length is exactly what I got measured down. Mm -hmm. So why? So when we buy appliances, it fits. Right, honey? Yeah, that's a good idea. So you're standing right now on the front entrance. Oh, now you're standing in the hallway. And now you're standing in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna measure the windows side to side and go all the way, what's a limiting factor is this wheel well right there. Yeah, cause that's gonna, yeah, cause that's gonna be um, blocking any appliance. Cause the appliances have to go all the way down to the ground. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Other than that, that's kind of it, hey? And I'm gonna wanna measure this window that's over there behind you. So we're measuring how far they are? What, what the, yeah, the how wide it is, right? how wide it is from the walls because I can't build a, uh, an actual wall this way unless where you are unless I know where that window is. I think we make the bathroom smaller than we anticipated so we have more room in the kitchen area. Yeah, I get it, yeah. The kitchen feels a little more open. Yeah, I think so. Because uh, we probably lots of food getting made in there. Bathroom. We cannot deal with smaller living space, I don't think. No. Please. Yeah, okay, let's, let's figure that out. Okay. So the other day something happened, which is really funny. No, it was a couple days ago when you had all the windows in. Yeah. And I came home from meeting after work and you had to put all the windows in that, well, all except for, I think one or two the day before, but this neighbor drove by that we have never met, but he drove by and he's like, way to go, looking good. <laughs> As he drives by with his window on the wall. <laughs> Cause he noticed all the windows were in and obviously he's been keeping track every, Every day when he drives home from work. It's yeah, so it, like what happens, like every single day we're doing this project, what happens with the neighbors that walk by? A lot of them stop and chat. Most of them. Most of them stop and be like, hey, what are you working on? Yeah. How are you going? What's going on? Yeah, they're very curious. So, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, everybody's curious, everyone's happy. You know, most of the people, I haven't had anybody, is that wet there? Oh, it's probably just from it's because the Because it's rain, yeah. Well, not rain, it's probably just old wet that hasn't dried up yet. Yeah, exactly. Rain. Uh -huh. I think that what we should do really is, I think we should offer every neighbor that's had to put up with all of our shit a, a free night package. When we, when we get this, and it, if they can make it there, they can make it. If not, then, then so be it. But at least they have the offer of spending three nights yeah. in an amazing area. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. Um, if they, if they choose. Very nice. Very nice Airbnb. We're gonna be in a tiny home when we're not in the middle of nowhere. It's not. <laughs> it's in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, but it's not in the middle of nowhere. To people the that kayak and kayak up there. there. Yeah, there's lots of water taxis that go right so by there. Doug and Marnie, get your kayaks out and <laughs> you can kayak the property. No, we'll have kayaks there. They just have to get a water taxi there. The, oh yeah, I'll need the, a water taxi to the property. Yeah. You know we got a new measuring tape? We got a new level too. These are our, our tiles that I got for <laughs> super cheap. 
What are you going to do with those? Um, so <laughs> they're beveled on one side, but they're flat on the other side. So hopefully we can figure out something to do it like this. So that the smooth side is on the top and maybe the sharp side or the flat side is on the bottom. Maybe along the counter. Blue. Blue and white. Or the bathroom. I don't know, that's five bucks for how many boxes for the boxes? I thought that was pretty good. So we figured out they were beveled on only one side, but whatever. Make it work. Super cheap and upcycling, not wasting. Okay, I'm about to do something that's super cool. Get ready. Hey, good morning everyone. I'm gonna call this trim flashing day. Just dropping $880 at Home Depot today and got all of my flashing for the fascia boards at the bottom and the windows. Some spaces there for the hardy board. All of my one by four trim. And for the base there is one by six underneath the hardy and the flashing for that as well whole whack of electrical boxes and adapters and caulking and you know I wanted to get a couple things for the outside so I can keep on going on the hardy plank but it's gonna be a busy next couple days hopefully this weather holds out you know it's looking kind of crappy right now So I'm just gonna put a little extra piece of tie back here and uh, make sure that's protected. Then we can uh, carry on with this process. Okay, so here it is. These will be my first couple cuts or bends. I don't know. 
I watched this on YouTube about an hour ago, so we'll see how it plays out here. So when this goes on, one to be about there. I'm going to bend over. My mindset is I'm going to cut that here. That'll fold over. Cut it back. Just try. We're just going to try it. Yeah, that'll bend there. This first cut, this outside corner, was probably the worst one that I've done in the whole house. And every single one got better and better, a little more detailed. But this one was almost brutal. Well, I figured I'd videotape this because maybe you listen to some older, wiser people, you won't have to do things twice because they've already done it three times. Anyways, I'm gonna take out my ridge joint there or whatever it's called, this two by four, because it's sagging already. And I'm gonna replace it with two two by sixes. So I have it supported right now with two jacks on each side and I'm gonna cut it three inches all the way across du -du 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 -du, and cut this bad boy out and put in my new double two by six. And then just like my girl said, we had a good long talk about what to do in terms of supporting it. And I'm gonna put a beam straight from the top to there and support the roof line. That should help out just a little bit more. So good advice is everybody, good advice. You do it, <laughs> you do it. It's not gonna be easy. So I snapped a chalk line all the way across. I, three inch intervals doom, doom, doom. all the way down I'm going to cut that out with a skill saw and pull it out so you know that point where you want it to be done yeah I'm at that point right now get in there my good morning I'm gonna start the roof today and we're gonna see how everything plays out right now. I'm a little intimidated by how it's gonna go. I have so much metal up here and there is a ton of it to do. It's kind of organized, so at least I know what to expect a little bit. So I'm gonna make some cuts and install some of the first pieces. I'm gonna start off with this bottom piece here, which is uh, the drip edge. And uh, that one was going to be 120 minus a half an inch. I'm going to start with that one. So the first thing I wanted to install was the drip edge. And the drip edge is along right along the fascia board. And I'm going to blue skin the top of this here all the way along. And that's just to let the water run off and drip off and drip down. Then I'm going to do this valley all the way up and cut it. Put that on, because that's going to go next. And then I'll do the other side. And then I believe I can start putting the pieces of siding, sheeting up. Yeah, let's do that next. Well, here we go. So here's uh, the first panels. Six feet long. And then this is the gap panel I guess that's going to go in the 
the ridge and that's going to go up against the siding and then cover up kind of like this right and go all the way down and this here is a gable end it's got a nice little cut and that's going to go over top of the gable there kind of on that corner there where the fascia board's going but i got these three pieces going on right now i'm going to cut this chunk of uh roofing to make sure it slides underneath that little gable right in there on that ridge and i'm going to go do, 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 all the way along So I made this tool here out of a two by four and I cut a one inch cut in there. What I did, hopefully this works, we'll check it out right now, is I could put it on the end and bend it down and create a nice curve and then kind of tapped it down with the metal of the rubber mallet there. So we'll check and see how that folds into that ridge there. So I already messed up. I wanted to make sure that when I put them down, boom, 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 that they were going to, when the wind goes, goes over it, be okay. The wind will actually get underneath this flap and want to lift it up when we're driving. So if I put them down this way, the wind will hit that ridge and go up and over, not lift up. So I'm gonna use this one on the other side of the house when I get to the other side. I'm going to start over here. Yeah, at this point it's getting a little sketchy. Kind of trying to figure out what to do with the ladders. And I decided to just straddle the roof line here and uh, cut with my skill saw and get that ridge gap, that ventilation hole done so that the airflow can happen. But if you're scared of heights, don't do this on your own. Well, here is the first attempt at me metal roofing. Holy crap. This was a bit of a challenge. I'm learning a ton. How many panels are up? One, two, three, four, five, six panels. Four more to go for this roof. And then the ridge cap on the top once the other side is done. And that roof is complete. Like it is almost looking really, really nice. This roof is called iron ore which has got a more of a slaty gray look to it all right i'll sneak right up here we'll go up the ladder and i'll check it out here so what i've done is bent this underneath folded the little tabs here all the way along doo -doo -doo. and then this is the standing seam so it literally just clicks in and that's it I gotta get to the edge. Should be only four more panels.
Well, that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching. You can see some of my bends are uh, getting better and better. The roof is looking amazing. In the next episode, I'll show you the finished product of the whole metal roof. But uh, again, thanks for watching. Lots more to show you. And uh, follow us on YouTube, subscribe, and uh, take a look at our other episodes of Sailing on Sailing Abbey. I'll choose you